Next, we'll be focusing on CyberArk EPV components. And throughout this course, we would be emphasizing on these uh, components, right? So to kickstart with, at the center, I have my vault, right? And if you recollect, what is the vault used for? That is right. It is used to store credentials. or passwords or secrets, right? So this particular vault is the heart of your installation and all of my critical data is stored out here. This is a very secure environment and you need to have this installation performed or installed on a physical machine, right? Now, why you need to do it on a physical machine Normally, if you do it on a virtual machine or a virtual infrastructure, whether if it's VMware or any other virtualization platform, uh, vulnerabilities or risks that are associated to that shared platform can be induced in this vault. So uh, as per the best practices and recommendations, the vault is always installed on a physical server that is dedicated for the vault itself, right? So that creates it a secure environment and by default it already has many other security layers that we're going to talk about when we discuss vault in more detail but uh, this is the primary component right so to store credentials and have a very secure environment for these credentials so I'll now name this one the next component is my CPM which is the next important component and the role of CPM is, you may have guessed, this is responsible for rotation, sorry, rotation of credentials. That is periodically, it would go on Windows devices, Linux devices, routers, switches, and rotate the passwords that is managed by the vault. So these could be admin passwords, local admins, domain admins, API keys, web related passwords, so anything. And out of the box, CPM comes with different plugins, right? So plugins are uh, configuration files that uh, tell CyberArk how to change passwords on Linux devices, how to manage passwords on Windows devices. So we normally issue passwd commands on Linux, right, to change passwords. For Windows, it is a different method. For Cisco, it is different method. So CyberArk needs to understand the different commands and the way to connect to end systems in order to rotate passwords. So all these plugins are loaded up um, in the CPM memory to make sure uh, the, the credentials are rotated and managed correctly. All right. So the other feature of CPM is to onboard accounts. What do I mean by onboarding account is that, say for example, I have thousands of uh, Windows devices or Linux devices. If I manually onboard them uh, or add their credentials uh, in the vault, it would take me several days or months, right? So CPM has this module of onboarding accounts where it can dynamically uh, reach out to all of those systems and import those accounts and directly change the passwords and stuff like that. So this is very helpful when you're actually onboarding several hundreds or even thousands of accounts at a time. And also uh, schedule discoveries and uh, tasks to onboard new systems that are joined to the domain, new accounts that are created and things like that. So after the vault, CPM is the next uh, big component that you have to have in your environment. The third one is the PVWA, right? So PVWA or Password Vault Web Access is nothing but it's uh, a UI to interact with the vault, configuration settings for CPM, PSM, and things like that. So this is nothing but it's a, it's a .NET application, ASP, that is installed on a Windows 2016 server in our environment. 
So uh, it, it's only installable on Windows devices and CPM too. So this is Windows. And these two can be installed as virtual machines, right? So the vault is the only one that needs to be installed on a physical device or a physical server. So coming back to PVWA, so PVWA provides uh, a web-based access or experience for end users to connect to uh, the vault. So when users are out here, they would open up a session through PVWA, which would in turn talk to the vault. And this access is provided over web browsers. So you can use Chrome or Firefox or uh, Safari or any other web browsers of your choice, even mobile devices. So PVW provides that interface to interact with the vault and other components. All right. So the next component in this suite of EPV or enterprise is PSM. It's called the session manager. So I'll name this number four. So PSM is, you may have guessed, it acts as a proxy to all the users and it connects users to the end systems transparently without providing the credentials back to the users, right? So when users want to connect to end systems, they can directly connect through PSM and PSM would be responsible for fetching the credentials from the vault and then transparently connecting end users to the target devices. PSM also isolates sessions. And what do I mean by isolates is that only PSM would be able to connect to end devices when you set up that policy in order to make sure that you don't have malware propagating into your network so that uh, sessions are proxied only out through PSM. PSM also helps you to record and store video files or text files when users make any changes to systems PSM helps you to identify that, capture that, and store it in a vault so that next time when there's an administrator or auditor, so if you have an auditor, they can just log into the vault and view all the sessions related to PSMs that are recorded and stored. And the auditors can figure out if there's any unauthorized activity uh, that was done by an administrator and they can catch that. What you can even do is through PSM, you can ban commands like RM-FR in Linux devices. So when somebody like an administrator tries to uh, run this command as a root RM-FR, you can deny user from executing this one, right? So why this is important, you can um, deny deleting shadow files, right? So if you know about ransomware, normally what it does is it deletes shadow files. So if you have a command or WMI command that deletes a shadow file, you can very well define it in the policy for PSM and you can block runtime accesses. So in short, even if you have administrators provided you with the PSM sessions when they are authorized and when they try to do something that uh, is malicious or that you don't want to do, you can very well do that as well. So it's very granular and very secure. All right. So down here, there are other components called Windows Privilege Provider and Application Provider. So Application Provider, this is layered to OPM and this is AIM that we just talked of that helps you to secure application accounts and on-demand privileges. All right, now talking about uh, the private arc client, we just talked of the web client, which is the PVWA. Private arc client is a thick client, right? So just like VMware client you, we used to have, it is called a thick client. And this provides you with some admin features that are not available in the web UI. For example, Cre creating the users in version 11 that we have in the lab cannot be done through the UI. You have to do this through the thick client. 
unlocking users if they are locked out, uh, specific reports, if you wanted to delete some safes that you cannot do through the UI, you can do those operations through the, the client. So majority of the things you can accomplish through the web UI or PVWA, but there are very selectful admin related features that you can only do through the thick line. So this is available as well. And we'll be talking about this in more details later when we do the installation, configuration and testing. And lastly, you have this Parkly or PSCLI and SDKs. And what this actually helps you to accomplish is it provides you with API and development related um, environment so that you can leverage CyberArk's development kits and uh, functions to write your own scripts. You can write your own code using the features and modules. You can uh, leverage PACLI, which is an exclusive command line interface for CyberArk in doing things like bulk import of accounts, integrating different other technologies. Say for example, there's a merger and uh, your company bought another company and they were already using CyberArk. And rather than just recreating their entire environment in yours, what you can do is you can leverage PACLI and you can even write scripts and you can import the entire data from their vaults into your vault, right? Including settings, CPM related settings, uh, accounts, user accounts, passwords, everything. So this actually makes your life more easier rather than to manually do stuff. This also helps you to export credentials or passwords out from the vault if you had to do that, or you can also import a lot of the bulk accounts. So this is there for programmatic use. So you need to have some development knowledge in order to take uh, leverage out of this and take the full flesh functionality. So this was a brief overview on what the EPV components are. And this would be a foundational class and we will be taking each of these components and we will be dissecting it. We'll be installing, we'll be trying to understand the different configuration settings, how they are set up for best practices and things like that. So this was a summary lesson just to touch base and kind of dip our toes into the water and try to see what's next. So in the next lecture, we'll be looking at how these components sit together and talk to each other and how they are typically laid out in a company or deployed. Until then, see you in the next lecture.